start this video, I would just like to come on here and remind you guys that here at Melanin Eclectic, black lives will always matter. And this is black everything. Black people, black culture, black lives, black careers, black existence. We stand by my people. And if that bothers you, this might not be the channel for you. But let's get on with the video. Hi guys, I'd like to welcome you guys all back to my channel. And today we are here to have a just a sit down chat about my thoughts on The Goddess in the Machine by Lori Beth Johnson. Now, my goal for this video is to not have any spoilers. But the problem with that is I can't fully talk about this book. So um, if there is a spoiler, I will literally pause the clip and put spoiler across the screen. And when I'm done with the spoiler, I'll put it at the bottom saying spoiler done and you can click back the sound on the video. We can do it like that because I'm trying to get better at providing spoiler free reviews, but I'm also trying to get better at making reviews in the first place. So in order to do that, I've got to talk about books more even when I'm uncomfortable doing it. So we're going to start with this one. Now I was given the opportunity to read this book through NetGalley from Penguin Teen. So thanks James for that. Um, but I also got the hardcover edition. He also, I was also sent an arc for that book. So that was another great thing. But then another time happened, I got sent the uh, Owl Crate version with gold. And so I got the book three times. Um, my friend is currently borrowing my other version of the book. Um, so basically, this story is set. Um, it's, it's a, it's a sci-fi book. Um, more into like cryotechnics and artificial intelligence. That's the realm that it's in and it's focused on this girl named on on Andra aka Andromeda who um, Thought that she was going into a crisis uh, A cryosis tank, which is basically like um, Every sci-fi movie, you know of where there's somebody like frozen in a tank That's what I imagine and she's frozen because her it's gonna take a while to get to this new planet that her her family, friends, and everybody are going to inhabit. So essentially it's like preserving their body as they travel through space because otherwise they wouldn't be alive to get to this new planet. Andra, however, Andra, however, wakes up in a place that she has no idea where she is on a new planet. She's super confused. Plus all these people on this planet keep calling her goddess. It's super weird, right? I loved the premise of this book. I felt that it was a thriller in its own way. It wasn't a thriller in like, you know, oh my God, everything's gory and death. It was a thriller in the fact that you were just as lost as Andrew was. Um, you only knew what she knew. Even on the fact that it's told in two person, which we'll talk to you on the second person in a second. Even reading through his, I was still confused. And I felt like, I felt like the author did a really good job of revealing information without um, without doing one of those knowledge dumps. You know how sometimes in some books they have like one character that's only there just to explain what's happening? She did that without, she, she told me the story without having to do that and I really liked it. I felt like um, I wanted to keep reading this book because I needed to know everything that Andrew wanted to know plus I had more questions and so I felt the book had a good pace I um I found myself just needing to know and for me when I get to when I get a book that just makes me feel like I need to know I consider that a good book um I know everybody gauges that stuff differently um but me personally it's always one of those things where I was like oh oh well if that happened then why oh well if that happened then why that's what this book did for me. But um, yeah, so the next person that you are introduced to is Jade, which is spelled Z-H-A-D-E, but it's kind of like shade, but Jade, that's the way the audiobook pronounced it. I was listening to the audiobook too. Um, so Jade is the one who finds Andra and releases her from the tank. And um, he... Basically, he is a banished prince of the planet that they're on. Um, he is 
the half brother of the current gov because they don't call him king they call him a gov the current gov is his half brother and so like but his half brother is technically the legitimate one which we'll get on to a second jade's character was very unbelievable for me he was written in a way where he was supposed to be aloof and where he was supposed to be cool and calm cool and collected and like not a lot of people understood him and da 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 i didn't really feel his character i felt like every other character i i could feel them but jade had something about him that was missing for me to believe him if that makes sense and maybe the author did that on purpose because uh, a couple of the times that I was reading the book and I didn't know whether or not I should trust him was also, you know, a part of the book where Andra herself was questioning whether or not she should trust him. So maybe this whole time the author wrote it in a way that invoked a feeling that I didn't even realize I was supposed to have. Just kind of had that thought right now. Um, also, for example... So he has a brother. His brother's name is Mirad. Hold on. Merit? I'm sorry. His brother's name is Merit. So... How do I describe this world without too many spoilers? So the world is in the future. And... It's a future where their planet is not like a safe planet. Um, there's what they call the God's Dome and, um, it's a God's Dome where like it's dying and they need people to fix it. And that's where the goddesses come in. So the way that I translate the goddesses, they are women who have special powers that fix technology. And the way that that translated to me is like, they're basically like engineers or something and they they have the knowledge that they need to fix things and when Andrew wakes up she is called a goddess and her mother worked in like cryotechnics and like engineering and AI so her mother was very smart but Andrew kept saying like you know I like literature like I, I don't do this kind of stuff like I know the basics because my mom taught me but like I don't know this stuff so the people imagine her to be magic um, because for some reason um, this progression in time has evolved people into almost a regression where technology is viewed as magic instead of technology and I found this part of the story interesting because this story is told with the idea that it is further in the future but some of the things that they did and the way that they spoke made me feel as if we had actually regressed in the future if that makes sense because the author created this language i hated the language i quickly learned that anytime there was an unnecessary ish at the end of a word that was actually supposed to be where ly was there was no real rhyme or reason for this made-up language i understand that it was an idea that english like time had progressed but i didn't find it a progressive language i found it confusing and like andrea i was like what what does that mean? Um, a couple of times it took me away from the story. It made me, um, because, um, sometimes if it was, it was, if it was a conversation between two people of that planet, they would only be speaking in this weird dialect. So sometimes the whole sentence came out a mess. It's basically like what happens when people who shouldn't be speaking Ebonics try to speak Ebonics. That's basically how bad it sounded to me when I read it. Um, that's the best way that I can put it. I was not a fan of the language at all. I, this idea that there could be so much technology and the people like regressed. There wasn't a, like, you assume that as time goes forward, now that we do have technology in our world, you assume that with technology, there will continue to be a progression, um, in intelligence and in the evolution of people like that's what I think and in this book it almost presented this idea that that might not necessarily be what happens and that's wild and as I'm doing this review I'm kind of getting that revelation that like wow interesting I wonder I, I would like to find an interview or two from Lori Beth Johnson maybe she's talking about the book and I would like to know her personal perspective 
on this book and like why she chose to write it how she did and i wonder if that will provide any clarity also i don't know if there's a second book and i feel like there should be I, without giving spoilers this freaking book left me in a place where i have so many questions it was like watching the season finale of a brand new series and you were just sitting there like so i have to wait how long until season two i kind of feel that way about this book um there are a lot of unanswered questions there are a lot of un unsettled events that need to close for me to be satisfied this cannot be a book on its own i i like it doesn't say in the back of the book if there's going to be a second one and i'm just like <laughs> Yeah, like it just, it just doesn't show. And I just wanted to show, I wanted to tell me if there was going to be another book. But there isn't. So, yeah, I mean, wow. I think that, I think that I actually might have been able to talk about this book without giving spoilers. Ah, that's a good thing for me. Y'all don't understand. Normally, I feel like I have to give spoilers in order to talk about a book. Um, but I didn't. Um, let me see. Was there anything else I was missing? I wrote notes. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So me personally, I, there, there, so Merritt's mother, Jade, Jade and Merritt's father, they share a father. Um, Merritt's mother is like the real queen, whereas Jade's mother was a side piece, basically. <laughs> um, was a love child. Jay was a love child. Um, and the bitter mother trope is fine in this book because it wasn't overdone. Like, she was mentioned as a kind of a description of a plot point a couple of times, but it wasn't done in a way where I was rolling my eyes or I was like, oh, God, here we go, another bitter woman, that type of thing. Um, but the problem is... I also did not get enough of her character to understand her motive better. And I guess I've gotten to a point where I like understanding the bad people's plots more. It, to me, it helps fuel the story a little bit better. I, again, like I said, there are a bunch of um, open questions that I have lots and lots of questions about. And so I just, for that, I, I don't know what to say about her. In fact... Um, I still have tons of questions about Jade, Merritt. Um, I don't have that many questions about Andrew anymore. Um, I will say that the way giving me what I needed for Andra was very satisfying. Um, it has made me question or want to have more nerd debates about artificial intelligence and all of that with my nerd group here. So like hopefully we'll be able to sit down and have nerd discussions again because um, I want to see what Andra does. I want to see what she does with the AIs and what she does with the tech and what she does with all of that. I want to see what she does. Um, and it's just like, wow, this is so cool. Um, yeah, but also at the same time while reading this, all I kept seeing was Will Smith and iRobot. <laughs> so it's like, Personally, I still feel the iRobot route. There will be no type of smart things running my house. Um, but on the other side, this book was very intriguing and spoke a lot about artificial intelligence and um, that particular world. So I'm very interested to actually read more. Um, Sci-fi is a little daunting to me. Um, it's why I stick to the fantasy realm a little bit more. But I do, I am interested when it's sci-fi like this. So my question to you guys is, have you read Goddess and the Machine? Are you interested in reading Goddess and the Machine? Please let me know down below in the comments section. And until the next time, guys, bye.